Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Liang Yan. I'm a software engineer from virtualization team. Uh, today, I'm going to do a presentation about uh, uh, GPU virtualization. It's actually an update. As you remember, I did several topics about uh, GPU virtualization, uh, FPGA, and other neural processes before. But today, we'll focus on the GPU. And uh, I'll just give you some update on the hardware side first uh, like uh, the the surprise part is that arm arm also announced its uh, gpu utilization based on their mali that's new and then i'll give you some uh, update about our current status in susa uh, surprise is that uh, we have the partnership with nvidia and uh, we are having a beta releasement now after that uh, I'll give you a demo about how to set up all this stuff and then run a, a container inside a VM based on vGPU. So basically zero configuration and uh, you could run your machine learning framework. Last, we will just take a quick look at like uh, how using vGPU, GPU virtualization in other platform, basically the container platform. Like uh, we can use the Kuber word. It uh, has a plugin to, to implement it. And also there's a micro VM. Uh, there's, this is an ongoing work start doing. I'll give you more about that. So let's start. Uh, GPU utilization. So uh, first let's check the NVIDIA. NVIDIA has some, some movement to do. Like this year, this May, they announced uh, their new architecture, um, Ampere architecture. And uh, yes, it has much more powerful. You can see from the picture that uh, uh, it has uh, nine times than the earlier, the water, water one, we handled. Uh, but uh, I don't want to talk about here. I, I want, because this is a virtualization. So actually, I'm more interested in this one, this feature. It's called a multi uh GPU, MIG. It's actually based on the SRIOV, or hardware virtualization. Uh, I mentioned earlier, so there is uh, Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA, their GPU, and uh, only AMD has the hardware techniques to do the virtualization. Uh, but now it changed. Uh, NVIDIA also use this one. And uh, the benefit of it is that uh, it's faster because it uses the hardware resources here. And also the, the code, the code implementation, the implementation code is very short, which means it's more safe. It's much safer uh, for, for it. That's the good benefit. Uh, so we, uh, we actually don't have this card yet. So, I, I can tell you more details and, until I really get one. The, the general impression here is that uh, it implement uh, seven instance here, which means you can run seven vGPU uh, at the same time. And, uh, but not only it could be used by VM virtual machine, it could also, also used by CUDA directly. So, that means, like, if you you are familiar with the uh, Docker running CUDA there, uh, you needed to give it uh, the, the the whole GPU there. But now you can just give you the vGPU there. That's a big improvement. I, I think that that's kind of a Nvidia's most uh, intention for for this feature. Uh -huh. It so yeah, I I could give you more later once we have this hardware here. And uh, here comes the surprise here. Like, uh, uh, actually, it's several days ago, and uh, they just announced this uh, Mali G78 AE uh, process. AE here means uh, uh, auto automotive enhancement. Basically, it's for the in-vehicle uh, experience. And uh, it also could use for the uh, 
uh, autonomous drive and uh, for automotive uh, driving here. And uh, that, that's a really good, uh, I think that's a really good angle for GPU virtualization. As you know, NVIDIA dominated all kind of uh, machine learning or the training and uh, inference area. And uh, AMD, AMD is pretty close one, but uh, it is still not even close to them. But uh, here in vehicle area, this is a pretty new. And uh, I think ARM has the, the advantage here. And uh, it also announced another techniques uh, a few months ago. It's different. Uh, it's more like they put a fairer GPU together and use an arbiter to a schedule to coordinate all these with GPUs, all these GPUs. So it's not like a virtual GPU, virtual GPU, but it's more like a, a multiple GPUs here. And uh, uh, they are going to use it for their Equinox V9 and uh, for the Audi, and uh, probably could see it uh, next year. Uh, yeah, one more thing about here is like, uh, this is kind of a new area. I just, uh, I think I saw the email that we we also have our uh, automotive Linux here, and we also have a team of works on that. So we will see, probably there will be more surprise from this area. And uh, this is the explanation here. It's quite similar with the, uh, uh, 800 earlier, like there's a different partition here, and uh, you can use there's a you can use it. There's a three partition here, and uh, do that. So again, we don't have this uh, real hardware. So probably I'll give you more detail in the future. So far, you just know that uh, yeah, they have this capability. Uh, after that is the AMD. AMD is still working on their platform called the ROCM, Read Open Computer. And uh, considering like uh, about the CUDA domination, they are working on uh, HIP techniques called the heterogeneous computer interface portability. So basically the, it's just a part your code and then translate into the CUDA code there. So. No, it's wrong direction. Like uh, you can write your CUDA code and then do this translation and run their driver directly run based on this ROCM. And uh, they have this new hardware MI50 and MI60. So uh, there's a progress here, not very much. And then comes to Intel. Like uh, uh, earlier they announced they're going to uh, release their discrete GPU card this year, but I think probably because of the pandemic, uh, it, it will going to be next year. But uh, there were some uh, uh, specs about it uh, released. So they call it uh, XE, X hat E here, X potential, X potential. So we will see for that one. Um, that's the kind of a status for the uh, upstream and the hardware area. And uh, inside of SUSE, SUSE, we also did uh, a lot of uh, work here. Uh, first is the good part is like, uh, we have a better, we have a partnership with NVIDIA VGPU team and uh, we are having our beta release already. So, and uh, we're also working on a official release by the end of the year. So if you are a customer or like a support engineer, you may have a go to try it. And uh, feel free to fire a bug if you hit any problem and send to me. I would be more happy to uh, deal with it. But uh, for here, like uh, let's see uh, our support here. Like uh, uh, we use the 3 15 FP2 as the host and for guests, uh, we can we test the uh, SP2, SP1, and 12 SP5. And also some Windows, Windows guest is also available. And uh, for GPU, 
it could support uh, 800, 800, all these kind of series here. Uh, but uh, uh, because of the hardware availability, we only test uh, 800 here. So we have done tons of tests to make sure the it works well in our sleeve Linux. And uh, we had this, uh, like I said, we test uh, based on the three FP2 and uh, FP1, FP2, 12 FP5 and Windows Server. We are, uh, we are setting up uh, this environment and then we also run a bunch of benchmark for the graphic and the performance. I'll just, uh, and the compute performance. I'll give you more later. And uh, so for the function test, uh, we we make sure the, the driver could be installed correctly. For example, you, you could run the NVIDIA dash FMI correctly, and you could install CUDA and run some demos there, the, some samples from the CUDA if you're familiar with it. And also 3D graphic uh, and uh, port manager display, remote display here, I'll show you in the demo. And uh, also like the max MDU support, how many VGPUs you could do uh, you may notice here it's still MDV. It's not uh, the uh, 800 because we don't have the 800. We don't have this SRIOV uh, techniques here. And uh, for, for performance test, uh, we did a uh, test. We did a comparison between vGPU and the GPU pass through. We also uh, compared uh, vGPU with the different. Uh, uh, Guest VM, like you, you can see that there's a 12 FP1, FP2. We also test a, a different model of vGPU. There is a, a bunch of, like a, it's called, a, a, for example, there's a C series 16C Charlie Q for Q Queen. And uh, also, th they also have different uh, memory sets. For example, 16 Charlie means. Uh, uh, 16 gigabyte memory, and the four C means four gigabyte, and uh, we also test the multiple VGPU situation. We check its scalability, and uh, so here. So from here, this is for spec view perf. It's for graphic, and uh, very interesting. When uh, when do our first try? We found the the graphic performance is really bad in vGPU, but uh, then we found it's because of the scheduler is uh, is wrong. So we do this optimization, and uh, we have dramatic improvement. It's so surprising here, and uh, you can see from here, it's even better than the GPU pass through situation, and. Uh, this is for the computer performance test. We are actually using um, the R, uh, it's called a Tensor RT, Tensor Real Time Engine there. And we run the benchmark here. So from the data you can see from the uh, computer performance, there's no big difference between GPU and uh, uh, vGPU and the pass through. And also, we, you can see from the uh, different model and uh, theme model with different uh, memory size, there's no big difference either. Uh, uh, there's a scalability test here. Like uh, we have four, four C at the same time, and uh, we compared it with a uh, sixteen C. We thought uh, so. From here, you can see it get. It gets worse, like, uh, I wouldn't say worse, like uh, it's not good, but uh, it's not that bad. Uh, that uh, bad. For example, 4C, we may think it's only like uh, one fourth of the... Um, I'm reading a question from the chat. Uh, Claudio is asking uh, which kind of tuning was done on this uh, system? If you want to comment, okay. I'll, I'll uh, uh, 
uh, we didn't do the specific uh, uh, VM. We, we didn't do the optimization, optimization based on the general VM. We haven't do that, but I think it will have better performance. Here we just uh, done the vGPU uh, here uh, for the graphic performance issue here. So uh, we like uh, you can see here because uh, that when we do when we did uh, the first round of test, it's apparently wrong. Like uh, that could be that worse. So uh, we talked with NVIDIA and uh, we worked with their engineer and also we checked uh, the, the scheduler algorithms here. And uh, then we noticed uh, uh, that part should be, there's the RFC uh, parameter we need to be disabled. So, uh, generally, we didn't do the general optimization yet, uh, but it's it's on our list. It's uh, uh, we are we should be done it before the official release by the end of the year. So there would be more data uh, showing up after that. But uh, anyway, I just uh, for this one, I just want to show you a uh, expression, like here, like uh, why it happens, like uh, what kind of uh, uh, performance it would have. So, because because of the based on this test, we found that uh, so we GPU actually has the similar performance with the GPU pass through, and uh, as you know, uh, so it it kind of because GPU pass through should have had the similar performance with the bare metal. So uh, there there's a performance loss. There's performance cost for sure. But uh, it's acceptable, and uh, the the return is that it would be have more uh, flexibility. Like uh, we can run multiple VMs, and uh, you can monitor the performance uh, for the VM. That's you can that's you can do when you just running them in the bare metal, and. Uh, also, like you see, we see uh, the different uh, uh, guest VM is is not that bad, so it's kind of similar. So that's good for, for us to know. So we may know that uh, the the performance is still mainly because uh, relied on their driver. So and also the interesting part is that uh, different memory size didn't change the performance. Uh, we we run couple tests to confirm it, but we think that's probably our workload is still small. If we, it's still as we discussed earlier, even they are using uh, the slices for different uh, vGPU, they still share the whole GPU card. So it's kind of a time slice. They just uh, share the time piece, but uh, in his in each time. This, they could still have the full control over the whole GPU card. So that's probably the reason why memory size of GPU didn't uh, uh, change so much on the performance. And uh, for the scalability time, we can see if you run multiple VMs, uh, VMs with GPUs there, uh, the, the result is not uh, stable. So, uh, I think that's kind of the 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 issue for the MD with the software we. It should be more stable for the 800 with their MIG and FIOE techniques, like a, a hardware solution for there. So we'll see. Like uh, we'll, we'll give it a run once we get the 800 card. I think we'll get it very soon. And. Uh, so yes, during that this test, uh, we have uh, we have met uh, different uh, problems here, like uh, graphic performance issue. That's close, and uh, that's because of the the scheduler, the uh, GPU resources slash scheduler algorithm there. So we tried a different way, and uh, that one is closed. And we also had the CUDA installment uh, install issue here. Uh, turns out the reason is that uh, there's two reasons for it. First, you need to register. 
you need a this is a commercial software unfortunately you need to buy the license from nvidia and register it uh, you can see more from the demo the other one is that uh, don't use the integrity don't use the driver gpu driver from CUDA integrated with the CUDA. You need to like, uh, you can choose the option there, don't choose the driver, but use the vGPU driver. Or you can use the silent uh, driver um, option here for install. And uh, we also have issues for graphic in 12FP5. Uh, the issue is that uh, 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 once we finish install, and uh, we we start our VNC server inside the uh, gas uh, uh, inside the VM, but then we start a VNC uh, client from outside, but it's always a black uh, screen here. Uh, NVIDIA response is that the only support for X11 VNC, but unfortunately, we don't have we X11 VNC in our uh, uh, 12 product production line. So we just uh, found an echo node, echo for this one. I mean, if there's a team from graphic, uh, if there's people from graphic team here, you may have a look, like uh, give it an evaluation, why we don't have this VNC server in our 12 SP5, or is it too difficult or worth it to do that one? Uh, the other one is a security boot issue. Uh, so far, we from the beta release, we only do a run fire, the binary install. So uh, in that moment, it's difficult to do a security uh, sign. So maybe in the next step, official release, which will be a RPM fire package for it. So we'll do that part. And uh, also, some other issues not available here. The snapshot for VM, like uh, uh, when you're running and you resume it, uh, you can't uh, see the, you, you can't snapshot the VGPU status here. It's uh, no issue for GPU utilization. So then you can do the live migration. But uh, actually, uh, Intel actually finished this uh, live migration support. Uh, I'm not sure if things changed in their 800. Uh, we'll see. And uh, it also couldn't support a multi hat for the graphic uh, use. Um, this is also a known issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is currently the GPU utilization in our X86. Uh, I actually also did some work on the GPU utilization on ARM platform. As you know, uh, uh, yes, uh, there's no, as, yeah, as you know, the deal NVIDIA is going to buy ARM for 40 billion. I think there would be more corporate cooperation between these two uh, architecture. So kind of my favorite, we'll see. And uh, I tried the GPU pass through and uh, actually I could make it work. There is a, I could uh, pass through inside a VM and install the driver, install the CUDA, and run these CUDA samples there. It works at turn. Uh, there's only some uh, uh, module configuration issue, like uh, uh, needed to load it automatically when you reboot. So, but this is, this is good. Uh, I would only say this is uh, technically ready because we don't have officially support it. Even a video doesn't uh, support it. They only do the bare metal support. And uh, also for the full GPU utilization, um, they, they don't support it because there is even have, has not uh, the code yet. Uh, but I think this will change considering this big deal between them. And uh, also for the Embedded burn. Actually, this is for also uh, NVIDIA in the in vehicle experiments. Like here, the Javier EDX. I actually have one here. So 
uh, I don't have time now. Probably I will spend more time for the tech week to do it, uh, to see like, uh, I know it could support KVM here. I just I don't know, not sure how could it do uh, GPU virtualization there. But uh, it would be interesting to, to figure out. And uh, CASP here, CASP plan, CASP also did a good work. They backport the NVIDIA Container Toolkit, uh, which is also for known as the NVIDIA Docker 2 earlier. This is the new name. They also backport the LibreWorld NVIDIA Container. With those two, uh, you can make your container using CUDA directly. And uh, we also test verified that you can run your CASP, you can deploy your CASP platform in a VM based on the vGPU driver. And uh, it's a go. So, and uh, now let's see a quick demo for here. So, thank you. So, oh, it's already started. No. Uh, here, like uh, I said earlier, you need to register an account to get a license. Uh, now, here is the trial code here. There's a three months notation. But uh, here, you need to download the software here. There is a different version here. Here, for our bait, we needed to use this uh, Linux KVM one. You also needed to download a license manager. You need to set up a license server. and. Uh, here, you need to set up a license server from here, but you also need to set up a license server from your local side. Uh, I'll see here, like, uh, here you'll create a license server and you input your license key here, and it will create a binary file for you. Uh, here, you need to use the MAC address. That's the only identify ID for he, for them. Here, you need to in, add the license and the account, how many users are going to be there. And once you create it, you can download this uh, binary bin file. And uh, then you go to your the local license server doing this last management and upload it here. After that, you will see your capability, the feature you you can support. If you register the client successfully, you could see it should in here under licensed clients. So as we download the driver from NVIDIA, here the WGPU KVM one is for hypervisor. The grid one is for the uh, above is for the guest VM. So you just uh, best install it once you install the, as the normal driver. You can see it's here, that the WGPU, I already used one. And uh, you can see the module, there's actually two modules here for it, NVIDIA WGPU, VFIO, and uh, NVIDIA. Once you install this driver, you can you, there's a type here under here, There's a, this is the WGPU type. And uh, the way to create a VGPU is you just uh, echo ID. Not I, I, UUID, I just uh, explained. You need a real UUID number to do it. And once you echo it to the create, you will create this device here, this the UUID. Use this number, but don't use the, you can see. And if you want to remove it, echo one, to the remove, you remove it. And uh, you can see the type names here. We're using 16C, 60 gigabyte memory for computer purpose. I also create a script here so you can do it automatically or open thought it later. So here, like uh, this is how to use it in a VM. You can see this is the key, MDEV. And make sure if you want to graphic mode enable, display, make it on. Uh, what manager, this is what manager controls 
alt one, and then control alt two, you can get into the graphic mode. It's a little bit slow, but it's not because of the GPU. It's just the network, internet, the network speed. And uh, here, this is the guest you can see. We also have this CUDA version, and uh, it's already running under GPU driver. Now let's see, let's get inside of the v VM. And uh, this is the guest VM. And uh, like I said, the grid, grid is the, its driver. And also install the CUDA. Don't use the CUDA GPU driver. Here I show you how to run a container, like a machine learning container inside of the VM. Here we are using the NGC. You still need a register account here and create your key here. And uh, yeah, this is how you do that. Once you register, your account and uh, the key and the login in with your key, you you can operate it. Here, this is the the test I showed you earlier, the tenth RT, and uh, you can just uh, pull the image here. And uh, there's a bunch of other images here. You can see TensorFlow, Manist, Pytor, and so on. So. Here, let's get in back to the guest win. If you are familiar with the Docker, you can just uh, Docker pull. Here, I already pulled it, so I just show you this kind of image here. And then you just uh, run your command here. And uh, the GPUs all, that's the, that's the secret. Like you can make the GPU works on your CUDA here. Now we are inside. Let's go to the TRT TensorFlow R real time test. This is the engine. This is the engine training. The so this is only inference, not the training part. And because of the time, inference is just a couple of seconds, minutes should be done. But if you want to do a training, that would be hours. Now here you can just uh, yeah, this is a FP32. You need the end eight. So here is the result. So here. Okay. Anyway, so th this demo is all running in our three product. We use the host uh, 350 FP2, the guest FP2, uh, 15 FP2, and uh, for even for the Libre NVIDIA and the NVIDIA toolkit, I actually used the package from CASP team. I didn't use their image file container from our CASP. Uh, just, uh, I'm not familiar with that part yet, but I'll try to figure out. We probably also have the same kind of image from I side. And, uh, okay, yeah. Here, so it's a commercial software. Unfortunately, you need to interactive with NVIDIA a lot. You need to resist account, get the license code, to pay them for the license code, and you need to use it. Uh, you need to use it uh, to resist all your um, VGPUs. It's a per VGPU per machine, so <laughs> you, you, you get it. And uh, then others, like uh, you create this VGPU, and then use it inside of the VM, and then get into the VM, you still need to install the driver and set up what you want to use. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's part. So like I said, we have this better release, 
but we did a lot of work before it. So we, I think we are ready for the real release, ready for the customer now. So, um, but that's not only, there is a, uh, you can see that uh, that's mostly for the virtualization, KVM, cloud, or something. But uh, there's also the WGPU in other uh, platform, like here, uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a plugin for Kubernetes to operate uh, uh, virtual machine. So we have colleagues working on it, and I think uh, it's also ready now for that one. And uh, with this plugin, you can make your VM support uh, WGPU too. So the other one is uh, GPU virtualization for uh, fire. I use firework here, but it would be more uh, fair to see it's for the micro VM, like the Rust VM or Firecrack or uh, micro Q QEMU, there's a micro VM type there. So this kind of stuff. Uh, it's kind of a new trend. Like uh, earlier you see NVIDIA, the 800 already make it, uh, make the vGPU ready for the CUDA directly. This is another level. This is more like how to secure, how to secure your uh, guest VM, the applications there. It, it has a different uh, mm, secure there. So now uh, vGPU already has a layer to secure it. Now there's a guest kernel secure. So there will be th three layers to secure it, not sure. But uh, this one is still ongoing, and I, I'm actually working on it. I'm using the, the difficult part is that uh, we don't want the PCI device, PCI bots inside the micro VM. Uh, I reused the VFIO bound, something there, uh, the component from the Rust VM M there, and I try to make it work. So, yeah, I hope I could give you more details. Uh, maybe next year for, for this part. This is kind of an interesting part to me. So I, I think that's it. That's all. The the whole upstream, like uh, vendors have uh, keep releasing new hardware and 800, like uh, from the Wendier MI6050 from uh, AMD and uh, the XE discrete card from Intel. And we also surprised to see the thrive of uh, in vehicle experience here, like ARM. I think NVIDIA will jump to two. I mean, for the GPU virtualization part. So that's an interesting part. And uh, for I think this also related to the as computing issues. Um, for our for Susa, uh, we we did a lot of work too. We had a, a lot of uh, progress here, and uh, we have our beta release. Hopefully, we ha have our official release, and uh, then we are trying to forfeit to extend this techniques to other platform. In our Casp team, like uh, we not only use the Casp, uh, but we also provide for the Casp. We can like. Um, the Kruber world with the VGPU, or even Suma, Suma support the VGPU. And also like the Kata container, the Firecracker uh, to, to support it. So there's a potential here and uh, that, that's it. So I think that's all. Hope you could find useful information from here. And uh, let's see if you have any questions. I, could, I hope I could answer. Uh, the question about the secure boot, um, yeah. yeah, the secure boot on the NVIDIA driver itself and has been very recently supported on for the SUSE as a, so as a packaging. And is that also the same way to be done for the VGPU driver or how? 
it's, it's, not it's not that difficult. It's not I use the secure boot, but it's not the secure boot idea. I think uh, it's more like uh, to sign an external module. <laughs> it's a much uh, simpler concept here. Like we just. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, quite messy because of that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Good case. Do I understand correctly that the uh, VGPU driver is also built uh, dynamic, dynamically at the time of the installation? It's not provided as a complete module, already pre-built one. Pardon me, I don't... Yeah, um, so the problem is that if the, the driver, the kernel module, has to be built locally, oh. and in that case, you have to, you have to sign the module by yourself. And for that, you need the sign, sign in key. And yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, like if you run the binary, that's fine. Like uh, the, cu the customer, the user could, uh, could do it uh, manually. But if we want to provide RPM, a package file, we need to send at the build process. So that, that moment uh, we needed to make a, like a general key between us and NVIDIA. That is difficult because, uh, uh, as I said, the signing step is after building the module. And we do build the module at the installation time. Oh. That means that the key is required for that, the rogue uh, signing key. And that cannot happen because, <laughs> yeah, Actually, it's yeah. private key. So, so yeah. For the um, NVIDIA graphics we did recently is just create a, a one-time key. Yes, yes, a one-time key. And sign it there, and then yeah, discard the so that private key. And I wrote it in a script. I saw it's just a one-time key made by himself <laughs> like, yeah. on the customer side. So, yeah. Very powerful. <laughs> I know the yeah we I I haven't really do it yet. It's our next step. So I'll see. Like uh, probably going to your Stefan for for questions. Ah, okay. And another question was uh, uh, as it's uh, the so NVIDIA driver as a whole installation step looks very complicated and maybe it is complicated. So you need you need many many registrations so on. Is mm -hmm. So do you have some any way to simplify the steps? <laughs> uh, uh, I think you yeah. yeah. uh, we want to. We actually want to host the package for them, but uh, they don't agree. It's kind of because uh, it it's about the the license, like uh, the the charging, like how to collect the the, the fee. They want to have the control. I, I think that's also the reason blocked our whole process. Because we have our sub, uh, our license subscription, we it's kind of complicated with their way. So for the moment, uh, we needed to get a little with it. <laughs> but we are trying to find a simple, simplified, like to, to do, like even maybe we can do it or we are just uh, give up the control, and let them to do it totally. So it's it's the question is not technically; it's uh, from the business level. So it's I mean I, we can do that for sure, but uh, we can't do it. Okay, thank you. Any question? Okay, it doesn't seem that there are further questions. And we are out of time. So thank you, Liang, for your presentation and your demo. Yes, I and understand. I think I will close the session now. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for coming.